Hi, everybody. We're back again. This is Craig Diamond, founder of Diamond MMA. Today joins us Thug Jitsu Master, uh, Uncrowned King. Do we still, does that still go? And, uh, I still like it. I still rock with it. Uh, UFC vet, coach, uh, every, stuntman, Eves Edwards. How are you doing? I'm doing all right, Craig. How are you, my friend? It's good to finally meet you, man. You too. You too. Yeah, no, I, I'm a fan and it's really cool to meet you in person. I know you've been wearing our cup, you said, for the last, you know, few years uh, of your career. So that's cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, when I, uh, when I first saw it, I was like, that looks kind of cool. I'd like to try that. It was probably like around 2009, 2010. And um, I reached out to you guys or one of my people reached out to you guys and you guys sent me a cup and I was sold right away, man. I, I love that thing. It's comfortable too. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, we, we spent a lot of time designing it. Um, you know, I've been at this over 10 years, just doing it as a, as a side hustle. I was working construction for my family business and um, just got into the sport. I've been an athlete my whole life. And um, we actually started making t-shirts. So this is uh, like the Diamond MMA brand t-shirt. You sent me one of those and I was going to rock it, but it makes me look a little, it's, it's large. You sent me a large jog strap and that's awesome. And you all sent me a large t-shirt and I'm not as large up here as I, as down, as I am down there. Oh, okay. Um, well, I, I'm sure you'll rock your t-shirt as well. I but will. Uh, well, I will. Yeah. So anyways, I mean, we, we started as a t-shirt company. We, we were talking to athletes and traveling to gyms and really what they said is we need a good cup. So, um, you know, we kind of started designing, uh, and, and taking notes on what guys are wearing, what they didn't like, what they did like about their cups and kind of Frankenstein, the system that uh, is all in one. So I'm glad you, you wear it and like it. And, uh, you know, most of the UFC is wearing it now. And um, even though it, they'll, they'll take a Sharpie and they'll, they'll color out our, our waistbands and all that. Um, we're proud that that's what guys are choosing. So um, that's cool. It, one thing about cups, it's interesting that I want to talk to you about. So you're a stunt man or are you still doing – Work? I do stunts occasionally also, yeah. Um, we, we've had a lot of requests from stuntmen that, to use our cup. Actually, um, was that the, I think it was the, like the new Mad Max um, with Tom Hardy. Okay. He, his stunt double wore our cup. Actually, we, we sent him and Tom a cup, so I thought that was interesting. Have you ever worn our cup on a stunt uh, shoot? I, I have, when I worked on Battle Angel Alita. Uh, I, there was no nut shots scheduled in, in my <laughs> scenes, but, um, I wanted to wear it just in case, you know, I had everything else protected. So why not protect the, the, the most delicate thing that I have, you know, well, I, 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 I mean, that's the other thing, man. You can wear it pretty much all day when I'm on set. You don't have really time to go and change and stick your cup on after sitting around for a while, you know, right. The actor's ready to go. He's ready to go. So. This thing is comfortable. I like the the the, the, the sleeve pants. I don't. I, I'm not a big jockstrap kind of guy, but the pants and the tights. I like how you guys have that put together. And um, I, I'm I'm sitting in mine right now. You can, uh, you can just, <laughs> you just wear it. You know, you can wear it indefinitely, and it's not uncomfortable. You usually don't want to drive to the gym in your cup, you know. But that was my thing. I would show up ready to go. All I had to do is I would wrap my hands in the car. My cup's already on. I just have to put my hands in my gloves and my shin guards on and go because this cup was that comfortable. Cool. No, I'm glad you love it. I mean, what? tell me about being a stuntman. What's that like? I mean, when, how did you get into that originally? Uh, well, my friend, Lynn Oding, he used to compete in mixed martial arts. Also. We were roommates in, um, in junior college. And um, he went out to California. He started doing stunts in Texas, moved out to California, started coordinating. Now he's directing um, TV shows and film. But he got me on the first film that I was on, Warrior. And um, that's how I got into it. Had a couple fight scenes, worked on that with Anthony Johnson, Nate Marquardt, and Juan Carnero. And mm -hmm. then uh, I just continued doing it after that. And stunts is a whole lot of fun, man. It's like, it's a little different than fighting, but the fun, the real fun aspect of it is like, it's like recess, you know? You get to hang out with friends. You just, you just meet a lot of nice, cool people. And then when it's time to go, you're really just playing. You're pretend fighting, and um, sometimes it hurts. I mean, I've done a couple things in a couple, couple films that um, kind of hurt. But in the end, 
it still looked real good and it worked out. And like I said, my junk's protected. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you did stunts from uh, Straight Outta Compton? I did. I was in a fight scene in Straight Outta Compton. Uh, there's a scene where Ice Cube and his crew is coming down and me and the lynch mob, I mean, Ice Cube and the lynch mob were coming down and uh, me and my crew were at the bottom of the escalator and we started a brawl. So, uh, I mean, if you, if you watch the movie, you, you will recognize me if you know what I look like. You don't need like a DVD player and a pause button, but uh, you would see me in there. In that cool. Scene. How how long did you shoot for on, on, that, on that movie for? How long were you there? So on Straight Outta Compton, I only worked about a week. Uh, I was there. I was moved, I went out to LA for a training camp. And again, my friend Lynn Oding, he was coordinating that movie for F. Gary Gray. And uh, he brought myself on. He had Tyron Woodley in there. Then we met a lot of other cool stunt guys on the show. But uh, he brought me in for the week that I was for a week while I was in town and um, we coordinated that fight scene and, and we got to get into a big brawl. That's a whole lot of fun too. Wow. And that is cool. So how many hour days are you on this? I mean, what, are you just hanging out there or what's it like? Well, sometimes when you get to set, um, it all depends on what's, what's going on, how the director has the, 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 the shoot seat line, um, shoot scenes lined up. But, uh, you know, you get paid for the entire day, so that's a cool thing. Whether you are in there for an hour or you're there for the entire eight hours that, that you're paid for. Uh, but most of the time you're there longer than that because the director has so many other things that he has to focus on. And um, he's doing this, he's doing that. He may film one scene 20 times just to make sure he has the right cut, depending on if it's TV or film too. They're so different, you know? TV runs like, it's quick, it's quick, it's quick. But movies, they have a bit more time and uh, to make it right. Yeah, so you could be sitting around for a couple of hours before you have anything to do. But fortunately, you're getting paid. And you get that craft services. You get that food too. That, that's a good way to get fat, man. What? So speaking of getting fat, and um, <laughs> you call right me now, fat, right? Yeah, I'm about. To, I, I got. I got. I got about <laughs> ten too many on right now, but it's. Um, Right now we're in quarantine, so if you're watching this down the road, hopefully we're not. But you know we got this coronavirus going on. Everybody's kind of trapped at home. Gyms are closed. Um, what are you up to? What are you doing to not get uh, get fat? I mean, are you doing anything at home? Are you tr running, training? I'm running whenever the whenever the day is nice outside. You know, sometimes it rains a lot, but uh, we've had a couple of nice, warmer and pretty days. So I've been able to go outside and get a couple of runs in. But when I can't do that and I want to do something in the house. I just do some calisthenics. Um, I got some of the bigger water bottles, I guess. I, I don't even know how much. Oh, like the water cool? Like those, uh, probably like those 10 gallons? Or? No, not, the, not yeah. the large ones. Just just the ones that you can put on the counter and they have the. Oh, the, yeah, I know what you're saying. Right. I'll grab a couple of those and just walk the stairs over and over and over again. Um, you know, and then some other calisthenic stuff. And then, of course, a lot of people have the. Uh, those challenges going around. I like the shadow box, you know. Uh, I'll sh I, I, we have a room downstairs. I'll go down there in the basement and, and shadow wrestle. It's a bedroom, so it's carpeted and whatnot, but I'm in there wrestling um, by myself with my imaginary partner. So I have a good time, though. I, whatever. And then sometimes I'm just kicking back, chilling, watching, you know, catching up on doing some binge watching. So and tell so me about I'm it. My next stunt, my next stunt, uh, my next stunt job. What uh, what have you watched lately? What 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 do you what do you binge lately? So my girl, she had never seen Entourage, so we just oh boy. We literally just went through that whole series. Um, the past that could take a while. Yeah, eight seasons, and um, I forgot. You know what? It's weird watching it again because you're binge watching it, so you get to see everything back to back to back. There's this one one season when Billy Walsh comes back. I don't know if you remember Billy Walsh, the, the director who was kind of nuts who did the Medi- Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Right? Um, he disappeared for a couple of seasons and he came back and he was sober. Um, I remembered when I saw him, I remember thinking, man, this is so different because when I watched it while it was airing, I didn't see him for two years, you know? Now it's been like 24 hours and I'm seeing him again and I'm like, there's no way he turned his life around that quickly. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, everybody's talking about that Tiger King show right now, which is crazy. 
I haven't seen that yet, but that's on my that's on my watch list. I just queued it up last night. I mean, are you in Florida now still? No, I'm on the East Coast, but I'm up north. I'm in the in the DMV area, so I've um I still live in California. I'll be back out there when all of this is over. Um, but I've been going back and forth. And while I'm out here, I'm training with Lloyd Irving a lot. So I've been in the gym with Sadiq Youssef and a lot of the young guys that he has. So that's kind of what I'm doing while I'm out here. Cool. So under, under where? tell me about what you're up to now. I know you're, I mean, you're coaching now. Um, who are you working with? Where are you at? Coaching. I did the last season of the Professional Fighters League. I uh, don't know what's going to be happening with them this year because of the coronavirus, you know. Uh, this thing's supposed to last through June, and their season's supposed to start in May. So I don't know what's going, what's all, what's going on with that. But I'm still doing, you know, my things on the side. Got a podcast, a broadcast that I do with my man, the Squid. Um, so we have a we have an Instagram account. You guys should check out the Thug Jits. Sub, Sub Fam is that that's it? Sub Fam, right? Sub Fam is another podcast that I have on my own. Um, I've been doing a lot of lives on on Instagram since we've been stuck in this quarantine. So um, I'm just trying to diversify my portfolio, Greg. I hear you. That's what I'm trying to do the same too. I want to get out there, talk to the guys that have been supporting us that we've been supporting, uh, no pun intended, but, um, and just, you know, doing things differently. I mean, you know, it's, it's not so easy sometimes to, to get on there and, and, and do interviews when you've never, never done it before. So um, thanks for helping me out and coming on. This is really cool. I mean, you know, I'm a fan and watch a lot of your fights and um it's, it's great to finally talk to you. Um, Anytime, man. I appreciate that. That's fun. So what's next? So, I mean, just wait until this whole thing dies down, I guess, to get back to normal life and then um, and then see what happens from there. Yeah, um, I have a couple ideas, a couple plans, but uh, a lot of that is going to take place on the West Coast. Got to get back out to California to do that. Um, I'm still coaching. So <clears throat> still coaching, still doing seminars and uh, teaching. You know, I... I I'm working with, like I said, with Sadiq Youssef and Master Lloyd Irving <clears throat> and a couple of the guys there. So as long as I'm here, once this is over, I'm definitely going to be getting back in there and try to put as much into them as I can. They've really been helping me out too. I mean, you know, I've been comp I've competed since the late 90s, the mid 90s. And um, now that I'm no longer competing, I kind of just been bouncing around from gym to gym. But that, since I left American Top Team and I'm not in Florida, but that place and Joe Schilling in California. When I'm in Cali, I train a lot with Joe Schilling. Um, but <clears throat> here on the East Coast, I didn't really have anywhere to go. But when they invited me in, man, it's, it's they kind of just accepted me like a member of the family. So that's been a really good place to work out. So I want to return the favor and give them as much information and knowledge as I can while I'm here. Cool. Yeah. I mean, um, God, you've been fighting. I think your first fight was in 97. Is that right? Yeah. I was a senior in high school. Now you're making me feel old. Well, you look good, though. <laughs> um, what, so how do you feel physically? I mean, bumps and bruises? I mean, anything, you know, any crazy injuries from your career? Or you feel, how are you feeling? I have a lot of little, well, no, I wouldn't say a lot, but I have a few little nagging things, some things that come up every once in a while. Uh, I have a fight in Pride against Saichi Aikimoto. Uh, taller guy, we fought at 160 pounds. So he throws a body kick at me, and I block it. And I'm thinking to myself, I get cocky because we're about, uh, we're about 12 minutes into the fight. You know, we had a 10 minute round. This is the second round, mm -hmm. and I block the kick, and I'm thinking, I'm beating him up. So I'm thinking, let me show you how to throw a body kick, my man. So I throw a body kick back at him, but he's a lot taller, and I, I bounce right off of his hip bone. The top of oh. my bounces off his hip bone, and I watch the video. And between hitting his hip bone and putting my foot back on the floor, my foot was already inflamed, right? Um, like noticeably, you could see in the video, it's, a, it's like a hematoma on my foot. And um, it's probably like two or three minutes left in the bout. So I have to keep my motion and pretend like nothing hurts because I don't want him to take advantage of that and, and put the pressure on me. Instantly when the bell rings, when the horn sounds at the end, you see me limp. But... Um, I flew back on that. My, my foot swole up on the plane. It's a 16-hour flight the next day. Oh. All these things happened in that time frame. I was able to continue fighting. Nothing, I was told nothing was serious about it. But now, when it gets cold, or if I walk for too long in uncomfortable shoes, for like a week, my foot's just, it just, it's just wrecked. So, so that's one injury that I have from fighting. 
a um, couple little nagging back aches, shoulder, neck, but that's the one that I noticed the most, probably because I use my feet the most. That's a weird one. So the, the top of your foot hit him right on the hip bone? Right on the hip bone. So and it, did you ever, did it break or did you, I mean, what did you? So I got some x-rays in Japan. They told me it wasn't broken. I, I'm thinking it was like a hairline fracture. Maybe they missed it or maybe they didn't want to deal with it. I don't know. But um, I was able to fly home. It was that, that flight, I'm telling you, man, that flight was really uncomfortable. Um, the swelling was localized like right on my instep when it happened. But I got on the plane and it spread up into above my ankle bone and down to like into my Ooh. toes. So that was really miserable. Um, and, and that's another thing. I got on the flight without like, um, I didn't think about it. I was young, dumb. And um, I got on the flight without like any, any painkillers or, or, or uh, you know, uh, muscle relaxers, anything like that. And um, the flight attendant, you know, it's policy. They, they wouldn't give me any like ibuprofen or anything. So all they were giving me for that whole flight was she was, she was kind enough to give me ice though. So I had ice on my foot the entire time, but that helped about this much. Oh man. Well, it's, that's crazy. Um, now we don't have, we have a couple minutes left because we only have sort of a certain amount of time. Where can people find you? Where can people follow you and, you know, get in your world? Yeah, you can find me on, on both the big social media platforms, Instagram and Twitter, under Thug Jitsu Master. Um, I need to revamp my site, which is eventers.com and thugjitsu.com. So like, if you look at it now, it's pre it has some pretty old things on there. I do need to revamp that. I got to find someone because I am horrible when it comes to technology. And um, yeah, and, and my Instagram has, you know, has a way to contact me. You can contact me through that. And I believe my email is connected to it also. Okay, cool. Uh, it was awesome talking to you. It was good meeting you. And um, let's keep in touch. I wish you the best with everything. Hopefully we'll see in some more movies soon and, and we'll be talking soon. No sweat, Craig. And, and I, before we got on, I, was, I just got out of the shower. I was putting on my jock strap and my cup. My girl was asking, why are you putting that on to do an interview? You're doing a thing in your underwear. And I'm like, no, you can wear it below your pants. And um, I wanted her to see that like this thing is legit. So I was just working with it. All right. I made it from all these different angles. And this is a five pound weight. This is legit real, you know? That's what it sounds like. So like, there's nothing happening here. I'm protected. That's how good this cup is. I'm confident. Man, thank you. I thought you were joking when you said you had your cup on. Nah, I mean, it's comfortable, man. You can, you can do it. You can wear it all the time. Just always be prepared for that, for that moment when you need it and don't know it's coming. That's the best, man. We could have practiced that. On that note, thank you. And, and we're going to take this video and enter it in our contest. We're doing show us how you wear your diamonds and enter a chance to win 500 bucks and some gear. So I'm going to count that as a video. And, um, yeah, thanks again. It was awesome talking to you. And uh, let's do this again soon. You too, Craig. And thank you for the cup. And I will see you guys again soon, my man. Awesome. Thanks, man. Peace, brother.